India accounts for about one third of the world's blindness. Cataract as the leading cause of blindness and cataract surgery is by far the most commonly performed procedure. In India, we operate over 7 million cataract patients every year. Just to put the things in perspective, that is the entire population of Hong Kong. Unfortunately, not all patients gain useful vision after the cataract surgery. <laughs> Although endophthalmitis following cataract surgery is a very rare complication, it is by far the most serious, sight-threatening one. According to the endophthalmitis vitrectomy study, visual outcome following endophthalmitis is often poor. As the aging population in India is only to rise, there will be a parallel increase in the number of cataract surgery cases. So the importance of effective endophthalmitis prophylaxis is not hard to understand. Right now ophthalmologists in India use perioperative povidone iodine along with drape, which is supposed to be effective in limiting the incidence of endophthalmitis after cataract surgery. Topical antibiotic prophylaxis is also common in practice. The topical antibiotic prophylaxis is meant to reduce the conjunctival bacterial load, thereby reducing the risk of intraocular contamination, during or after the surgery. Presently we do not have any strong evidence to support its efficacy in preventing endophthalmitis. Moreover, the indiscriminate use of these topical antibiotics has a theoretical risk of inducing bacterial antibiotic resistance. It is no surprise that there are some surgeons who do not use topical antibiotics for prophylaxis at all. But these are exceptional cases. The use of topical antibiotics for prophylaxis is quite common. In a survey done by the American Society of Cataract and Refractive Surgery ASCRS, in the year 2014, 90% of doctors said that they used topical perioperative antibiotics and almost all of them agreed to use it postoperatively. These antibiotics are often used for up to 1 to 2 weeks after surgery until the incision fully heals. Further, it is advisable that these should not be tapered as this would encourage the emergence of resistant organisms. But the question is, why do some patients still develop endophthalmitis even while having preoperative antibiotics and povidone iodine? The answer to this question was found in a microbiological study published in the year 2012. The researchers examined the microbial contamination of the irrigating fluids at the time of phacoemulsification after the use of topical povidone iodine and antibiotics prophylaxis. It was reported that, in spite of using preoperative antibiotics and povidone iodine and following careful sterilization and aseptic protocols, one-third of patients still have intraocular bacterial contamination. It happens because corneal incisions still permit an influx of fluid during surgery even after hydration of the main incision and side port. That's the precise reason why intracameral antibiotics might help. Uh, and among the methods that have been looked at are intracameral uh, antibiotics. Um, intracameral antibiotics have a pretty long history since actually 1991 when the first uh, study was published in the peer-reviewed journals. Uh, and over time, it's just kind of gained in momentum and there's just been study after study after study proving the efficacy of intracameral uh, antibiotics, uh, including uh, very large studies in the U.S showing that intracameral antibiotics uh, are superior to what uh, we normally do, uh, which is use topical antibiotics. The use of intracameral antibiotics for prophylaxis has been there for a while and the story of its evolution is quite interesting. Cefuroxine, a second-generation cephalosporin, was the first antibiotic studied for intracameral prophylaxis in the early 1990s. The 2006 European Society of Cataract and Refractive Surgeons ESCRS, study reported that the rate of endophthalmitis is reduced to one-third in the patients which received intracameral cefuroxime in comparison to those which did not. But this is not an unalloyed blessing. It has its own share of issues which led to its unpopularity. If the antibiotics are mixed in the operation theater before being injected in the eye, there is always a theoretical risk that it may introduce any contaminant or adjuvant during the process. It has an added risk of error in dosing. A case report published in 2014, reported six cases of early postoperative macular edema, reported after cefuroxime injection, which was suspected to be due to its overdose. In this series of six cases, the first four patients involved the same surgeon in the same hospital, and two of them on the same day. At least two cases of anaphylaxis associated with IC cefuroxime injection have also been reported in the literature. 
Next in the line is vancomycin, which has been in the use for intracameral antibiotics prophylaxis for quite some time, before the advent of moxifloxacin, which ultimately replaced the former. Vancomycin is a broad-spectrum antibiotic that has been a common choice for intraocular and ophthalmitis prophylaxis, but there is no preparation that is commercially approved for intracameral use. Most commonly, 1 mg per 0.1 ml of the drug is injected intracamerally at the end of surgery. In the 2014 ASCRS survey, this was the most commonly used antibiotic among those respondents employing intracameral prophylaxis. The data from 2002-2014 showed that the routine use of intracameral vancomycin was responsible for the dramatic decline in the incidence of postoperative endophthalmitis. After 2014 intracameral vancomycin started losing its popularity for intraocular prophylaxis in many European countries. It was the time when the cases of hemorrhagic occlusive retinal vasculitis HORV, associated with it were being reported. Finally the findings of a joint ASCRS task force on HORV were published. This report included 36 eyes from 23 patients. Surprisingly, every single case occurred following uncomplicated cataract surgery in which intraocular vancomycin was administered. HORV appears to be a type 3 hypersensitivity reaction. Outcomes are frequently poor because of the rapid onset of neovascular glaucoma. Many surgeons have abandoned vancomycin for routine endophthalmitis prophylaxis. Moxifloxacin is a fourth-generation chloroquinolone that was approved for topical ophthalmic use in 2003. Intracameral moxifloxacin is also found to be an effective alternative for endophthalmitis prophylaxis. A very large study conducted at Aravind Eye Hospital, Maduri, studied the effect of intracameral moxifloxacin on the rate of endophthalmitis incidence. The study involved the data of some 600,000 consecutive cataract patients. They reported that the use of intracameral moxifloxacin reduced the incidence of endophthalmitis in phaco surgery by three and a half times. It even reduced the endophthalmitis incidence in patients who had posterior capsular rent. Intracameral injection of Vigamox brand topical moxifloxacin, which is unpreserved, is a more popular option. Several studies have reported on the method and the safety of using topical branded Vigamox for intracameral prophylaxis. Generic topical moxifloxacin contains preservatives and other adjuvants that are not safe for intraocular use. The nurse opens a fresh bottle of Alcon Vigamox and takes care not to touch the tip of the bottle and she shows it to the scrub nurse. The scrub nurse withdraws around 0.5 to 0.7 cc of undiluted moxifloxacin in a 1 cc syringe. This is a BD 1 cc syringe that is divided into 10 divisions. Then a 26 gauge cannula is used The BSS in the cannula is flushed out by part of the moxifloxacin till the cannula is completely filled with the solution. So 0.1 ml, 0.1 cc of moxifloxacin is injected undiluted into the eye. I hope you liked the video. Feel free to share your views on this issue, in the comment section. Check the description for similar videos and product links.